You can see here out on my lab table, I've made a bit of a, a tent with some leftover aluminum foil. That's just to keep the humidity in, keep dust from settling on everything. And you can see I have two mushrooms, one smaller that I cut right off, and one a bit larger that I ripped right from the block and cleaned up any loose vermiculite. And the idea being that if you leave it a little bit more attached to there, the mushroom stays a bit more alive and sporulates a little bit harder. If I just take these off, you can see I just have a straight piece of wire. I'm kind of using it as a bridge. Don't want the mushroom or anything to touch the dish. I think it's one of the mistakes I had before where I kind of made the wire more like a like a bent shape like that sitting in and then the mushroom sprouting it that way but you know you still kind of touched and you know it's good to have the mushroom suspended above the dish or you know the aluminum foil or whatever you're using there's a, a variety of techniques you could do to get a spore print but I find just doing it in a, a glass petri dish is the best you can see the small one Right over here, made a good print. Again, you know, I'm not going for anything really large, large print. And then the bigger one made a whole bunch right in this part right here. And I wiped out these dishes with alcohol before I did all this and, you know, cleaned everything with alcohol. I didn't run the flow hood or anything like that because, you know, the moving air will we'll blow the spores away. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple more clean dishes on top of these and then we'll use the spores in these dishes to inoculate some agar dishes as well as make some hopefully really good spore syringes. Alright, I have four dishes made. I have 100 milliliters of sterilized water in a jar. I have a few syringes. I sterilized five of them. No water in them or anything like that. The first thing I'm going to do is do three of these dishes and use my inoculation loop to touch the spore print and just do a little streak across the dish. Same exact procedure as I would for when I made the morel spore dishes, if you remember. I got one of my Petri dishes that I've used to collect spores, the, the one with the larger mushroom in it. So it's pretty thick to the one side, but I'm going to try to stay away a bit from that side. I don't want to get it really thick to do this. up my inoculation loop. Now, like a dork, I forgot, or I didn't realize rather, that when I made these prints I used the large dish, which is the, the top dish, instead of the bottom dish. I thought, oh, I want to use the large one so I have more area. But now, you know, of course, I can't put the bottom dish in because it'll be nested inside unless I flip it upside down and then, you know, do it all weird like that, so. It'll be okay to store it like that because I'll just put the dish in and then tape it up, but I should have I did it the other, with the other dish. But anyhow, I'm going to get my loop red hot. Low, nice red. 
Applied into the wetness of the fresh agar. Cool it down a bit more. And then I'm just going to touch this loop on the perimeter. Just like that. And then streak it very quickly across. I guarantee I have a really small amount of spores. I'm just going to go ahead and streak this dish too. The zigzag cross. And then I'll do one more dish. Re-sterilize my loop. think about it too, even if you accidentally got too heavy amount of spores on the loop, by the time it streaks down to the bottom, hopefully you get some mycelium and not bacteria down there that you can pull away from. Alright, don't need that anymore. Oh, not for the moment at least. I'm going to go ahead and make the four syringes first and then once I make one I'll go ahead and put a couple drops on this last dish just to see how well that works from the spore syringe right to the dish. See if I can get it no problems this time doing that way. Now I've let everything cool down to 80 degrees or less. If you put your spores in hot water, it's going to kill them all. Reheat my loop. Give it a quick cool. Make sure there's no excess water on there. And then I'm going to do a little bit more than touch it, just grab the, a very, very small amount. Probably so small you can't even can't even see it on the loop, but you can see where you've scratched away. Now I can see it. It's the very tiny amount. But once I swirl that around in the water, the spores are gonna disperse so so much that none of them are gonna settle out. That's what you want. You don't want don't want your spores to settle out, it seems. It's not good. Go ahead and take one of these bottom dishes and clean it up. Get alcohol off it. And then I'll lid that. 
and it's upside down, but no biggie. And I'll take some uh, parafilm, go around that once, and then some masking tape over the parafilm, and that'll keep the spore print from drying out really bad. If your spores dry out on your piece of foil, which if you do it on a piece of foil, make sure you put your foil in a Ziploc bag. But yeah, however you do it, if they dry out, they'll want to kind of like gather into a sh almost a, a hard sheet. they difficult to work with. So, always best to do this with fresh spores so you know they're not dried out. Tell I, I ran my alcohol lamp too low. I started burning some wick. You can always tell if it starts getting red little coals up there. I'll have to add more alcohol before I go back to the dish. But, like usual, keep your hands out of the out of the jar. Draw it up. I'd say too, now that I've had this you know bad experience with syringes free freezing in the refrigerator, make sure you leave a little space so the plunger, if it accidentally does freeze, the plunger doesn't pop completely out. But you know, test your test your areas of the fridge to make sure these aren't gonna freeze. And make sure you get the air out. And make sure your needle is twisted on tight. Usually, people would do this with like a shot glass. And I measured it out. A shot glass holds about 50 milliliters of liquid, so you kind of think 100 milliliters is about two shot glasses worth. And actually, you know, I don't even need that flame at the moment because what I'm going to do is just put a couple drops like this around this last bit. Well, it's about three drops per hour. It'll be alright, I hope. Alright, I'll label these up. Wrapping my dishes up, wrapping my spore dishes up, maybe even put those in a plastic bag too to make sure they're not going to dry out. The bed still will dry out a little bit through the film and uh, masking tape. And then, you know, hopefully five and seven days, we'll see some spores germinate.